Good evening all and welcome to another program of Open Forum this evening, which is a special program that is being produced by HRSXM. Um, tonight I have with me Cassandra Richardson and we have some other guests that hopefully will be joining us soon. As you know, over the past weeks we have been discussing women in the workplace and women in leadership and so we wanted to continue along this path as we recognize women we all know that this month is Women History Month, so that's where we want to um, we want to continue our discussion. So this um, week we're going to be discussing women in leadership, finding her balance, leading with authenticity. Um, now, if you are first time joining us here in Open Forum and you're looking or watching us from YouTube, you can click the subscribe button. If you are joining us from Facebook, then uh, you can just click the like button. Cassandra and it's just the two of us, so we're going to have to hold the fort until Simone and hopefully Kim, they get here. So before we go into the program, Cassandra, do you want to introduce yourself to our audience? Just tell them something about yourself, you know, something spicy, as I would say. Spicy? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, okay, well, hi, my, my name is Cassandra Richardson. Yes. Um, I'm originally from St. Martin um, in the community. Um, I've worked... So, um, predominantly in the social domain. So, Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, predominantly in the social domain. Um, when I came back to the island so, after being away for um, many yeah, years, um, I, I was uh, I worked with domestic violence. So I was the executive director for the domestic violence shelter here on the island, safe haven, um, spent some time there and then um, started my own consultancy business and started a, a also a nonprofit doing gender um, sort of work, more in, more in um, anti-violence work. Um, so it's been very, very interesting. Uh, I can for imagine. Me. I've gotten into very um, spicy discussions um, <laughs> about gender and gender relations, um, yeah. especially where we're talking about domestic violence and such. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been an eye opener uh, for me working in this area um, on the island. Um, and, you know, just, just sort of, of looking at our system, what's in place, um, and then also um, learning from my community and also educating um, the community. So more more of a dynamic discussion for me. Okay. Also, when I say it has been an eye opener, it's been very educational for me as well. Yeah, that is so nice. You know, giving back to your community is the best when you Absolutely. can return. When Absolutely. you can return and just you know, I I really really admire that. So I know your work. It must be very, very interesting. I saw Simone came up just now. I hope yes. I think she is somewhere backstage. So hopefully she can um she can get to join us. So while we wait for Simone to join us, um, you know, what I want to say to our audience persons who are looking in, you can um you can type in the chat some of the um some of the reasons why you think it's important that women be in leadership or if you are a woman in leadership you can share your experience with us so that we can you know have a lively discussion so um before we go into the discussion uh you know for years cassandra i know you can agree with me that it's no secret that as women we have been faced with a number of challenges, greater challenges than men in our quest for leadership. It's it has not been an easy road. It's it's nope. a it's a hard road and a high mountain to climb. Maybe it's Everest if we want to say it that way. Yeah. And um, there are still many disparities. We have, I mean, in our pay, we are paid differently. Uh, opportunities to advance. Men usually get more opportunities to to develop themselves or advance in their career over a woman for whatever reason um, we would not know or we still are not um, are not privy to. And then there's also unbalanced representation for us as women on major decision making bodies or rules um, in these in these areas. And so there are also many preconceptions even among ourselves and lack of support or lack of mentor 
-hmm. that is also keeping us or younger persons from aspiring to become leaders and so this evening we want to address as i share with our audience we want to address basically three main points why why is it important or why does it matter that we have women in leadership how as women especially if you're career women and you're also family you have a family how you can be balanced Balance, yeah. Ooh, yeah exactly and three how we can lead with authenticity i think we have miss felix with us here good evening Hello. Ms. Felix. good evening and how are you I'm, I'm quite well and how are yourself I am fine and I am excited to be a part of this discussion. This Great evening. to have you. We were actually just doing our little introduction, so maybe you can just quickly share with our audience, you know, um, something about yourself as you join us here before we delve into the conversation. Okay, well, there isn't a lot to know about me. I am a, a mom of one. Very proud of that fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also happy that he's an adult. <laughs> I, am free. I am so free right now, but I'm also an educator on St. Martin. I've been an educator here for uh, 18 years now. I've been at St. Martin Academy, the academic campus, all those years. Um, mm -hmm. During that time, well, most recently, I've been appointed as the honorary consul for Guyana in St. Martin. And aside from that, I'm a writer, a journalist, an editor, a poet, whatever you want to add on to me. That's what I am. <laughs> great, great, great. So it's a pleasure having you here, Miss Felix. And Thank we are you. about to we are about to jump head on into the discussion and we want to start with um the topic or the point as to why um women in leadership is very important or why it matters. Because for me, I think this is just my little thing we are very good or being in leadership role we are good when it comes to when it comes to decision making at different level we see things differently some say we we lead with emotions it is necessary to, to have that at times because yes it can be a negative but it can also be a positive so i think having women in leadership role is very very important because we talk about equality and equity so it, we we need women in leadership and so i want to i want to bring cassandra in here if you can share because we know cassandra explained to us that you know she's been working with women and gender fear so if you can share with us some of your points or some things that are the importance as to why women should be in leadership today why yeah. it's important okay well i think because we're 51 percent of the world's population or 50 percent of the world's ago. population so we should be in leadership at somewhere not not just today but you know before right um because um yeah so things that happen in the world also affect us so why not why not be in leadership right mm -hmm. um and so I wanted to bring up, you know, some points that you mentioned um, about even, you know, leading in, in a particular manner. So you mentioned with emotion. Um, and, and, you know, the, 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 as studying gender and gender relations, um, there's a lot of, of, especially when we're talking about women in, in leadership roles or in authority, um that it paints us because of the the different sort of characteristics that are usually associated with being a woman right so we're nurturing um we're emotional um we're passive we're you know so there's and then and then there's also a list that also is characterized um for the male gender and i don't necessarily think um that you can't cross those bounds, like those those two different things as being a woman, you, you know, when I'm talking about biologically, men are also very emotional. Have you ever been in a meeting where a man sort of gets on and yells? That's also <laughs> emotional. It's not, exactly, it's not, it is. It's not attributed to him, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when a woman, we have a lot of pressure when it comes when it comes to, to, to leadership positions, right? So um, we have to work twice as hard on this to be seen and to be um, recognized as leaders. 
And so I can't wait to when we get to the topic of leading with us authenticity, right? Because um, I think both genders suffer from that because of the roles that we are ascribed to. And if you're more of a traditional thinking, I understand. I'm more sort of a modern thinker. Um, not to say that I don't feel that there are place for having those um, different types of, of characteristics associated with the genders, but it's problematic when when you when you paint a picture um, where women aren't supposed to be leaders. So it it it, it looks that those 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 ascribed characteristics don't allow us the, the leadership, right? Um, but yes, absolutely, I think that we should be leaders, um, that we have a place. We are 50% of the world's population. Um, many atrocities have been done you know, to us. There are countries where women aren't allowed to go to school. Um, we're, not, uh, we're, we're, not, we're barred from education. We are um, killed at a very early age. We're not wanted as babies. Um, so, yeah, more people, more women in leadership would would also allow allow us the equality and and the respect. Yeah, right? definitely. Definitely, definitely. Miss Lucas, is there anything you want to say on this point? Oh, definitely. I have a ton of things to say on this. <laughs> oh, my. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. No, but um, it, to support what Cassandra just said, you know, when we talk about women, the the just mentioning the word women, I want to make it very clear that we are natural leaders. And this is not just saying it because I'm a woman, but we are forced to be leaders and um i don't know if if um many persons would agree with me but for example here in the caribbean when we mothers for example you have a child the man is easier is quicker to walk out on the family and leave the woman to run the home and to you know to bring up that child mm -hmm. so we have to we we can't say like some men oh, I don't feel like it, or I'm working, or that sort of thing. We have to get up, and we have to get, and we have to raise those children. And very often on our, our own, even if there are men in the home, you know, you always, most of the time, you have a lot of men just pushing back and saying, oh, this is the role of the woman to raise the child. So we have careers also, but we still have to do what we have to do. So even, even though both of you touched on the issue of emotion, I do not see emotion as a weakness. We are emotional because we're passionate about what we do. And we know that we have to get up and get it done. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a strength. That's a, you know, a, a strength in our character. And indeed, yes, you have men who are emotional. But many times, I'm, unfortunately, I must say, when the men become emotional, they, they, in most cases, they crumble because they can't do what we are doing you know <laughs> even in terms of um education mm -hmm. education i remember um year well i don't remember but i know years ago you know um just out of the colonial era men were mostly in education because of course the women were you know left behind but we more and stay more, at home and make babies stay at home make babies cook the food iron the clothes and all of that but no, women started to educate themselves and step out there. And today you will find, even on St. Martin, majority of the educators are women. Why is this so? And this is not because we want to step into this role and take over the role. Everyone has a choice. Why are the men not stepping up and doing what they need to do? So at the end of the day, um you know this is just who we are we are natural leaders we nurture um in the education system in the schools uh we have to be mom counselor nurse uh you know whatever they ask of us and we step into the role and we do it you know but i'm going to throw this out there very often we ask the men are you willing to step up and take up this leadership role now nah! Uh, that's for me. Uh, 
Come that with your means, child. Right. So we need to, and I'm putting this out there to men. We, the strong women and the leaders in the community, we also want you, the men, to step up and become the leaders that we know you can be. I'm not saying all men are like this, but I'm saying if you look at our societies throughout the Caribbean and around the world, where women are stepping up, most of the time is because the men are just, um, you know, handing over everything to us and giving up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I do like the point where you say that we are natural leaders. And indeed, you know, because we are women and you made the point of giving birth to a child, having to nurture that child, manage that child, guide that child through life. That is actually us leading because we, long ago, they say you're a housewife. Now you say you're a house manager. Yes. That's what, <laughs> yeah, you are a house manager. It's no longer housewife. You're a house man. And it it fits the top it fits the title i mean you manage the home you manage the finance you manage the kids you manage everything, everything. in the home so you are a home manager that is what you are so we are in leadership role or we you said we are forced or we are placed into those roles from the time we were born as women mm -hmm. and so once we have women in these roles and because we do it at home when we go out into the world or corporate world or the world of work if we are given that opportunity, then we are able to express ourselves. We are able, we have critical roles. We are able to make inclusive decisions. We are able to have proper representation. Because if you have a board and the board is all male, they still would not understand certain things, how to govern or how to manage majority of the workforce is, fem is female, so they still would not on. So having a female representation there on the board also gives us that um, diverse viewpoint. We bring something to the table. They may be looking at something from a different perspective, but now we as a woman, as women rather, we're on the board or we're in decision-making bodies. We are able to give our take on it now we'll have them thinking hmm i never really thought of it this way maybe we should consider so once we are placed in these roles then we are able to make the critical change that is needed and in addition to all of that we provide so many skills i mean we are skillful you know we we come with with imagination going back to the home you you just build a home as a family your husband gonna look at it and say who, who got to decorate the home exactly we have creativity we are creative by nature so we mm -hmm. bring all of that to the table when we are placed in leadership roles mm -hmm. and 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 people sometimes people don't get it uh, we we can go on and on about the emotions they tend to focus on that but it is important that we we we, we are placed in those roles as, as a matter of fact or given the opportunity i know we have made strides over the years but we still have a long way to go we still have a long way to go. Cassandra, is there anything you want to say here? Hey, we have Miss Simone here with us. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much. We were just discussing why it's important or why it matters to have lead, women in leadership roles. So you came in just at oh, the yes, right time to share your <laughs> Yeah, to share your <laughs> little bit with the it. audience. Good to know. So what do you want to say on this point? I must say uh, good evening again to everyone. Good to see you Thank again, you. Aisha. Good to meet mm -hmm. you, Cassandra and Miss Kim. And I really enjoyed everything that you have said so far. Um, I am going to come and be not so much a devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. We like that. But I'm going to be a bit divergent because I'm passionate about this, this aspect of women in leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with everything that you all are saying. I think women need representation at the highest levels and at all levels of leadership, because we talk about the glass ceiling, but we also talk about the broken rung, right? Where you can't even get to leadership. We're, we're, we're prohibited from even getting into it um, for all the reasons that you have named. The concerns that I have with women in leadership are that sometimes as women, we're not paying it forward. 
-hmm. And so it's important when we are women in leadership that we don't practice the negative things that we have experienced to get us to where we are, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yeah. right? I mean, it, you see so many examples of women hurting women, women marginalizing women, women shutting women out, women just, you know, not making a way, not mentoring, not mm -hmm. creating opportunity. It's like we can't get in leadership and then we forget why we're there. Mm -hmm. That's true, really the, the, the part that I want to add to the conversation, because if we're going to do this, if we're going to be advocates for equity and equality and fairness and justice and all of that, it can't just be for only women. Mm -hmm. So we can't just create opportunities for women. And we see our, our organizations become out of balance because now we just filled with women. We, we need yeah. men too. Mm -hmm. And then we can't, ride on men's heads because now we're in charge and we're going to get back at you because I, I hear it all the time from men that have women bosses and sometimes it's a very negative experience for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so i think it is important for us because our voice does matter i think what we bring to the table is a balance and it's not just an emotional balance i believe that the way women think is necessary in organizations I think women are very creative. Women are inclusive. Women yep. are, um, they know how to use resources for the very reason that I have to make a dollar out of 50 cents. I have to raise these children. I got to make it work. And women bring that to yeah. the workplace, you know? True, so true. they're very resourceful and they can make it happen. So I, I totally agree that women have to be represented. I just want, us as women when we get to these levels that we're not a part of the problem true you know i was talking to a colleague earlier and i was telling her that on one of the previous shows that you were on you said something that stuck with me when we were speaking on manage i think it was management something on management yeah. and you said that you can either manage the way you were managed yes or completely opposite yeah. Because and so the point there of when we get there, we need mentors. So when women get to leadership, indeed, it's very, very important that you know you guide, you mentor, you you just help those to get to the level that you are. Show them how they can advance. You know, this is what I do. Here is where you can improve on what I did because I did not have the resources that you have today. Use it to your advantage to get to the top. You know, help them, help each other. We have to help each other. Ms. Lucas, I know you were itching to say something. I was itching to say something. <laughs> I was itching to jump in. I, I do agree. I do agree that um, we have to manage differently and not do the things that were done to us before we got into leadership positions. However, I think what my issue is mainly is the fact that there are so many men who are not willing to step up we are calling on them and asking them to step up because there are times when I, I don't know if you know you young ladies feel the same way, but there are times when you feel you know really heavy and overwhelmed because you feel as though you're carrying this on your own. There is absolutely nothing wrong with us being leadership, but we also need the men to start stepping up. That is where I, I have a major issue. So it's it's a little of uh, the opposite of what you were saying, Simone. Um, not necessarily keeping them, you know, there, but um, but asking them to just do a little bit more, and not just leave it up to women. Just oh, you will do that. No, that's y'all. You, you do that. You do the best. You know yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. I have a perspective on that, and again, I'm coming. I'm divergent, right? <laughs> But, and I agree with you because I think that in many cases, women have enabled our communities, right? And enabled our families and enabled the men in our lives and all of that sort of thing by overcompensating, right? Like, and not setting boundaries. So if, you know, home slices, like, well, you, you handling business, so I don't need to bring you maintenance i don't need to help out around the house if we're not gonna step up 
and say, you know, hold people accountable and say, well, hey, and again, this now go, goes to redefining roles. Like who, who says now that it's my role to clean the house? It's my role to help the kids with the homework. It's my role. Like, so these are convers baseline conversations that we need to be having, you know, mm -hmm. and even at work, they, they, you know, how is it that it's the woman's role to be the note taker? <laughs> the like, oh, and the guys, coffee getter. Oh, get the yes. coffee. Mm. <laughs> right? So, so I think that uh, in some ways we've enabled that because we True. just kind of slide into it so easily mm -hmm. and we just do it because we want to get it done. So I think we have a push mm -hmm. back on that. But then I also think that tied to what I was saying, that we've caused men to get quiet. We've caused men not to step up because we are so belligerent and sometimes very harsh and combative. And mm -hmm. I've heard men say this often, like, I'm not here to compete with you. You know, mm -hmm. you, you are here, you are here at the table, you making the money, you got the power, we don't need mm -hmm. to be fighting. Like we're on the same team here. Yeah. And so when we come at men with that very combative approach, they withdraw. And I've yeah. heard many men say that before. Like they're not stepping up because we're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so is, that fair, right. is, is, is that a fair is that a fair thing for men to hide behind that you know we're not stepping up because you know the women are too strong or they're too harsh or they're too combative? Um, my whole thing is um, we're all different, and I do agree with you. I don't believe in you know being so combative and so on. But then some men will feel that I'm too strong because I'm very opinionated, and if I have something to say, I'm gonna say it. And I believe everyone should be like that. You know, I prefer people to say what is on their mind instead of pretending that everything is okay and then behind you know they're talking mm -hmm. so um so my whole thing is that i will never use an excuse as to who i am and what i am and that is what i'm saying i don't think men should do the same it shouldn't be that this woman is too strong or this woman is too combative or you know have your opinion you have a brain in your head speak up yeah yeah. And I think from just talking to men, because this is like a real passion point of mine. And so I've kind of made it like a research thing almost. Um, I created this platform called Men Speak so that mm -hmm. men could come up and talk and women listen. Because it's normally yeah. us talking all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> and men listening. So it's very interesting when you do listen to them and what they say. And yeah. I agree with you that, that they need to push back. But it's almost as if there's a fear there. There's a fear that they would be perceived as abusive mm -hmm. and that they're bullying and all of that, that it's, it's toxic mas masculinity and all the other things that's out there. And so I think that we have to establish, and perhaps this is what, um, perhaps this is what we need to do when we are in leadership is how do we have these conversations? How do we model the behaviors? How do we challenge them? And say, you know, you can speak up or you can share, you know, don't don't back off. I have an opinion, but you know, you can have an opinion too, you know, and, and maybe create these safer spaces for us to improve gender relations, you know, as opposed to us being so polarized, because that's the way I see it now. I mean, we kind of polarized it's us against them, and, and we're just spying against each other. Cassandra, you wanna have the last word before we move on from this point? We have been silent for a little while. Yeah, just um, yeah, just uh, like to to listen. Um, but um, I think where it's caught up for me um, is the again the ascription, the roles, and whether we consciously or unconsciously think about that, right? So here, you know, I'm hearing, you know, we want men to step up. And then, you know, at the other end, I'm also hearing, well, the men don't step up because there's sort of like a, like an unspoken sort of rule that if we speak up, we're going to get sort of like shut down, right? Or we're going to be seen as some sort of like animals trying to take over. Um, and I think, um, Simone, you mentioned something that was really sort of key um, 
with this the, with the gender their gender relations right so again unconsciously or consciously when we think about what is a man and characteristic i'm not talking about um biological right so beard chest whatever i'm not talking about those things but i'm talking about the characteristics and when we think about what a man is supposed to be even though as modern as we'd like to to to, to think right so we think about man is you know leadership man is head of household man is you know aggressive um they're able to speak um they're strong you know all of these other things and then when we look at the descriptions of women nurturers this that that um and and then can't the two meet are can't men also be nurturers can't can't women also be be strong um so when when i when i when i teach those gender relations and and start started talking to the san martin community about you know so many why does domestic violence exist why why does it exist right where not to say that men aren't also um they're also not abused right they they are um and there there have been sort of seeing more and more abusive cases uh where men are the victims from their female partners okay so that that's also sort of like on the rise however um there is still a vast difference um between um victims of abuse who are women as opposed to victims of abuse who are men right so there's still that 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 difference still now when we sort of break down the reason why is because we're sort of of really sort of tightening those roles and that's where the conflict really comes right and yes i do also think that there is there is such a thing as toxic masculinity but i also do also think that there is such a thing as toxic um femininity as well mm. right um and 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 that it's it's that it's that sort of competitiveness that we've also learned from men as we want to enter um being leaders and um you know having our voices known but because yeah it, it's the competition thing for men right and so this this is the way the blueprint for us to sort of okay well we need to we need to start tearing down each other or we need to start sort of barring um the other person from coming in and so if we're thinking about feminine roles we're more inclusive we don't if we do leadership we should be doing leadership as inclusion right and as in as engagement um if we if we want and i like that i like that i think i think there's there's a, a place for both i personally um shy away from from comp I, i i always hated that word competition um mm -hmm. i i i don't want the only person that i'm in in competition with is myself from yesterday or mm -hmm. myself from last year right to mm -hmm. see where where i am i look to others as inspiration or others who ain't doing what i'd like to do and look at them as absolutely not that's not the way that i would like to um to to lead but so in for comparison so the gender role ascription um element for me is sort of 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 like the go to of where i try to explain um not just domestic violence but also to um just gender relations in general right and i know people you know some women like their men really masculine and men like their women really really, really feminine but but what does that mean right and and what are what is sort of the impact um for working behavior for leadership um for even our discussions how are we going to be relating to one another we have to also see those characteristics as fluid that men okay men can't have babies <laughs> they can't have babies right i mean they can't naturally bring forth life um into the world but those characteristics they can have they can be nurturers and that's also that's also leadership So maybe we have to think about what what is leadership? What does that look like? Can't leaders also be nurturing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. So they should um, be. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But but in the boardroom, you will hear there's no place for that. Why? Mm -hmm. Must be not true. Right. Mm -hmm. So even even as a as a woman coming in your your pencil tight skirt and in a in a boardroom, you you have a lot of women that also lead like that, right? By putting you down or being very whatever. Mm -hmm. They're going to call them very masculine, and then they can't mm -hmm. find a man, and then mm -hmm. you know you know all of those kind of other things come into play. Or you need but, a man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right, right. So I mean, you don't don't get me started. Don't get me started. That's a different show. That's with women in dating. I don't know. Yeah, you're making, you're definitely making some good points, but I think at the core of what you were saying just now, if um, persons were listening carefully to you, is at the end of the day. We have to have mutual respect for each other, both yes. the genders. Yeah. And yeah. once you have that kind of respect, you are correct. It's it's not about competition, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's about us recognizing who the other person is, whether you're a man or a woman, yeah. and respecting him or her for for that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think right. the qualities that you talk about, we we need to reframe them because they're gender neutral, in my mm -hmm. opinion right i mean anybody could be direct kim already says she's a sharpshooter i'm just yeah. saying my mind right. and that's mm -hmm. it now right. why would we say that's a masculine quality why would we say she's mannish mm -hmm. right <laughs> she's just direct yep. she speaks yeah. her mind and right. men can speak their mind and you got a man who don't speak their mind yeah. it's not a yeah. gender related thing these are gen right. gender neutral things in my view right. and right. the same as nurturing you can have men right. who are very nurturing i found men and professional men who i would say are mentors they're the yep. ones who would check on you they would take you to lunch they would ask you how's your career going that's nurturing yeah <laughs> right yeah. and so that yeah. i don't find that to be a feminine quality it's a human right. quality that right, shows right. care and compassion and empathy right 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 you know yeah you know, ladies we're speaking we're we can go on all night yeah <laughs> yes, no yes. <laughs> yeah we can go on all night on these each point you know it's it's so interesting we can we can go all night and we can talk all night on these points but you know everything that you guys have been saying it kind of like lead directly into the other point that i wanted to discuss as women how we can find that balance we know it's a challenge when you choose to be a career woman and then you have mm. your family. You also have yourself. So how do we balance that? How do we balance? We have to be a wife. We have to be a mother. We have to be a teacher. We have to be a nurturer. And it can become overwhelming. So how do you guys think as women we can... Kim already says, yes, she's a mom, but he's an adult. So, you know, she's, she ain't got chin diapers anymore. She ain't got worry. Yeah. I, I usually say to Al, I say, here, I think, you know, I am going to be a mother that I think by the time I'm ready to go into menopause, the child might be their teen and I wouldn't have the patience. <laughs> so I can send them to you. I'm going to say go to your father because I emotional right now and I'm in my feelings. So, you know, how do we manage? How, how can we, you know, find that balance as women in order to be, you know, career oriented? How, we, how can we have it all basically yet be balanced? Yeah, I, I want, is I it want possible? To in, I want to jump in here. Um, <laughs> it's it's a very that's a very good question, but I will tell you if I'm to honestly give you an honest answer is that I find that it is a difficult balance. I mean, others may have their own opinion, but it's a very difficult balance because very often many of us when we get to a certain position and we reflect on where we came from and how we got here um you would hear comments such as you know i wish i had done this differently because as a mom they always tell you there is no manual you don't come into you know you don't bring your children into this world with a handbook mm -hmm. um and sometimes something suffers Mm -hmm. That's the honest truth. Something suffers because um, 
sometimes when you work your way up the ladder, it takes long days and, and nights and weeks. And then you find that, um, oh, I didn't give enough time to this area of my life or I didn't give enough time to that area. Because I remember when I started at St. Martin Academy, I literally worked sometimes 10, 12, 15 hours a day, you know, <laughs> went in early in the morning and left late at night. And at that time, my son was very young. But um, and then in later years, I came to recognize where I could have done things differently. You know, mm -hmm. I never came to say it because I even tell young mothers, I also guide them. If I see a colleague of mine is working herself or himself, you know, long hours and not making time for the family, I would say you have a family. No, you have to put this down. So I'm even at the point where I'm in self-care with my group, you know, where I tell people, time to stop working, put down the pen, go home, pick up your children, go on the beach, mm -hmm. you know, because that is very important. But yeah. sometimes we don't recognize that until years later. Yeah. You know, that's for me, you know. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Cassandra? You know, listen, Aisha, I'm I'm kind of with you on the, the, the baby making thing until later. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you, though, um, but they say forties and new thirties, so yeah, I, got, I got a long time ahead of me, man. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I don't have any biological children. Um, I have the, and you know, I, I, that that's another that's another thing, right? So, as a as a woman, even as a man, there are certain things that um, society will tell you that you have to want. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm even working on 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 that guilt, really, to tell you the truth, because of, of, of what society told me that I I had to want. Um, and, and kids was never that. Right. I've always known that I always wanted to have an education. Um, I didn't know in what, but I always knew that I wanted to learn more. Right. And I love kids. Don't get me wrong. They are my best friends. Um, maybe because I want big child myself, you know, at 47, <laughs> but, um, I love kids, absolutely adore them, but I don't even think that I would have been able to accomplish. So the, 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 the things that I, that I wanted, um, and, and sort of like the experiences that I wanted if I had biological children, right? So, um, I, I quite much enjoy my work. I quite much enjoy the things that I do in community, for community, um, you know, things like that. So, but I also watch um, some of, my, of my, my friends who are women struggle with the balance, right? So it was either this or that. And, you know, I must agree with um, with Miss Lucas Phillips that I don't know necessarily if you can have it all. Like, I think that it's just a way that you make peace, you yeah. know, with um, with if you want a career and you want it, because if you was one of those people that you definitely wanted both of those things, that you, you may have enjoyed part of it in your life for one, and then say, you know what, I'm going to make peace with where I came as far as to my career and now I'm going to have some kids at the end the end in the, of my of my 30s right and then I will watch my children be teenagers when I'm ready to go to the senior citizen home but you know but you just make peace peace with that um mm -hmm. society is like a bully in the, in the ground I find right so those kinds of um, attitudes and, and, and things that society says that men are supposed to want, that women are supposed to want, that you're supposed to achieve at a certain um, point in your life. If you're not careful and if you're not to thine own self be true, so how do you lead with even authenticity or how, how do you lead your life with authenticity and battle that and not um, go to sleep either feeling guilty, ashamed or you know, one of one of those things or, or, or proud of yourself and society is telling you, well, you need to have this and you need to want that. And by this age 
and we didn't have these milestones as a woman and other women do it to other women so don't be one of those women that do it to other women don't be one of those men that do it to other men right um people should should really try to find what makes them happy and and try to find those people around them that encourage that yeah simon yeah i am i'm loving this conversation yeah. for me balance is it starts with um putting in perspective i think just coming off what cassandra is just saying and and, and making peace with certain things yeah. i think it, it really starts with putting things in perspective so when you talk about the 40s being the new 30s i remember being in my 20s and thinking that everything had to be about career yeah. and building a career and, and finding that come up and you know and you get into your 30s and you finally you figure i'm going to get this dream job and and then you're focusing on all these different things yeah. and then you get to a point where you're like you know okay what does all of this mean anyway like who decided that this who is decided that i need to be focused on right you know and then you start battling with all these feelings and i don't know how it is where y'all live but in the bahamas the people are brutal and they'll ask yeah. you you're not you're not married yet Trust you don't have me, no children yet. The countryside. You know? why are you still single why are you so why are you still single okay. what wrong with you what wrong you know? with like you <laughs> <laughs> or if you're divorced, what did you do? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, come on, you can't win. So you have to really, and and even now I think about it and I said, you know, very easily, most nights I could find myself still at work at this time. And and even that you think, you know, is that worth it? Exactly. You know, to the point where you are missing out, you're missing out on moments. Yeah. You know, you're missing yeah. out on moments with yourself. You're missing yeah. out on moments with your family. You're missing out on moments with your children. You know, mm -hmm. is it worth it? And so mm -hmm. for me, finding the balance is, what do I want to put my energy on? What do I mm -hmm. want to focus on? What do I want my life to be about? What do I want my legacy to be about? Mm -hmm. And then just shaving away everything else that's not leading me toward that. Right. Um, so, so, and, so. and secondly is, and this is what I struggle with, I am fiercely independent. Mm -hmm. And so it is very difficult for me to ask for help mm -hmm. and to receive help. Mm -hmm. And in order to be balanced, you need help. Yeah. <laughs> you yep. need a support system. Mm -hmm. You need friends. Yep. You need so, someone so. Like, like, I have a brunch buddy, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so every so often. If after church on Sunday, that we could go find somewhere. What, what's happening? Let's go find something to eat after church. Or yep. what are you doing mm -hmm. Friday night? You know, we're all single corporate women. And so, you know, we find things. But you need help. You mm -hmm. need someone you can vent to. You need someone, and that, whether that's a friend or a therapist or whoever. Listen, when I get to my capacity, mm -hmm. <laughs> then um, that that's it. Done, I'm shutting yeah. down. I don't have any more to give. Yeah, I need to, uh, you know, just but, find my way. Mm -hmm. but yeah, Simone, you know, so yeah, Simone, you touched on a number of points, but you know, while you were talking, what crossed my mind is that sometimes when we are in a, a particular situation, it is very difficult to actually make that conscious decision that, look, I am going to do X, Y, Z, this is how I will do this. This is how I will do that. Sometimes we are forced into certain situations. And, um, and in my life, I never really, uh, and please don't, don't, don't tell me I'm not sounding ambitious, mm -hmm. but I never really strive to say, okay, I want to be vice principal one day, or I want to be the honorary consul one day, or I want to be this. All I remembered when I was a teenager and I left high school is that I wanted to go to university and study law. And that was all I wanted to do. Where I wanted to go after that, I didn't know. But mm -hmm. it so happened that my life took a different turn. Mm -hmm. And at the time, yeah. for example, when I became a mom, I had to make decisions day by day for that child that I was responsible for. 
-hmm. And um, so it wasn't like, okay, I, I need to do this. So you, you would find yourself, I found myself in a situation where I had to work long hours in order to be a mom who provided for my child. So it was not a, a conscious decision where I sat down and said, you know what? I'll focus on my career now. No, there wasn't anything like that. I had to do it all in one. And then later on in life, now in this, now in this stage of my life, I can sit down like, you know, you ladies said, you know, ask for help or delegate. I can afford to do that now. Or I can say one day, you know what? I, I think I need a break. Let me just purchase a ticket and go somewhere and relax. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How many persons, how many women who are working their way up really can do that? Not many. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so is, true. You know, when we talk about the balance, there are so many factors that influence that balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was talking to I was talking to another colleague earlier in the day uh, uh, some of the points that you made kim you know about you said in in your earlier years you you know you realized that there you could have said no more more often so to speak so we have to set boundaries but in setting those boundaries we ourselves tend to to break them so to speak because i i'm a career person yeah i'm, I'm at work actually i'm sitting at my desk here because i'm working on stuff i'm, I'm reading I emails and, you know so i am actually at the office but when is it you know can i consciously say you know what aisha you need to stop and go home i'm not a mother so yeah i don't have that family part right and luckily my husband is not well luckily unluckily my husband is not living with me so i don't have to go home and make dinner so that's a right. plus for me but other women don't have that luxury right, they so have to go home they have right. to make well they don't have to but i mean you would it's want to make them exactly so yeah. how can we how can we set those boundaries to say you know what i'm going to work from nine to five or maybe an hour and then i'll go home i'll do this i'll look after the child i'll, I'll create prepare dinner i'll get stuff done then we also have to how do i prioritize the task okay so i know my child has a basketball game or a football game or some talent show at school but that same day i have some stuff at the office what is more important how, you know what? Do, I, how do i Aisha, prioritize those tasks? that's a very good question and i'm going to say if you have a partner why should you be making those decisions by yourself we've that's just sort of like spoken about those characteristics being neutral Mm -hmm. So I think that you know, for, for single women, you know what, and with kids, I think that it's hard. Like, it I'm, is, I'm yeah. not even going to lie. I'm going to just be like, you know what, props to you. Because, as, mm -hmm. because especially as, um, again, society sort of mm -hmm. dictates that if you're a mom, you're a single mom, and you got to take care of this kid, your, your system is even set up in that way, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no sort of, um, how you say, real push for um, the man to take yeah. sort of like, not just financial responsibility, but also emotional responsibility for, mm -hmm. uh, for a human being that was brought into the, like he could go, he could leave, there's no law, there's no legislation, mm -hmm. there's nothing. So mm -hmm. women have a lot more to risk and lose mm -hmm. in, in yeah, that true. circumstance. But true. if you are blessed, um, if you are skillful enough and knowledgeable enough, and I say that because not all of us made very good decisions when it came to partner picking, right? <laughs> I'm going to put that out there, right? I, I know that I, I kiss a lot of frogs, maybe still kissing all of frogs, but... So I'm, I'm so I'm saying that if you are if you are blessed to have a supportive partner, don't be making those decisions by yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, as so, women, we sorry. Yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead. No, no. No, what I wanted to say is that we have to change the narrative. You spoke about society. We have to change the narrative because society expects certain things. And I tell people. I ain't a morning person. I only get up in the morning because I know I have to come to work. <laughs> when I'm on vacation. And I know I'm putting Alan Blast all night tonight. I don't make breakfast. And he knows that. So if I if I am in the mood and I get up and I feel like I am a very good wife today, I may make breakfast. <laughs> Other than that, 
he understands that I am not a morning person and I don't make breakfast. So he doesn't even ask me to make breakfast. He would make it. He would say, babes, what you want. And he would go, he know what I would eat. I mean, I don't, because I, I don't even make breakfast for myself. I don't have breakfast at home. It's I the same. Eat, it's the same I eat husband. about 10, mm -hmm. 11 in the morning. That's when I, I would have mm -hmm. a cup of tea or maybe a cup of coffee or whatever. So he doesn't even ask me that. So it's not expected that I make breakfast. But as I said, if I feel, you know, I want to be the good one. But Aisha, Aisha, <laughs> what you're touching on is that you have that, um, you, you, you have the liberty you know to do that as i was yeah. saying even in my home my husband is so supportive you know if when i go home tonight yeah. i know there's dinner there mm -hmm. you know breakfast he makes the breakfast you know that sort of thing but yeah. I think what we have to look at is not the majority of women are not don't in have that shoes. right yeah that's and it that's many it. So of it's more these, difficult right so many of them have to go out there and work and you know um I mean in, in the school system where I see children who don't even see their parents yep. because they get up so early in the morning and they get on the bus get to school they're basically raising themselves yep. when they get off in the afternoon the parents are either still at work or just went left the home to go to work yeah. So sometimes those parents are coming back 11, 12, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the children are sleeping. Then the children mm -hmm. have to roll out and get out to school by themselves and so on. So those are the kinds of situations I think that we need to start, um, you know, focusing on a lot as to how we can support those families. Because mm -hmm. very often the women find themselves in these situations and we can look at the St. Martin uh, community where we have a large um, immigrant population and many of them came here and they're hustling the dollar and you know sometimes we look at them at school and we say but you have to make time for this child too mm -hmm. you know you have to you, you have to take some time to supervise because when the parents don't supervise the children go astray mm -hmm. you, you understand right. so i think i yep. think um I think this is a conversation that needs to continue. There needs to be a part two, a part three. <laughs> but it always happens on this show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but but definitely, definitely, um, you know, uh, it has to be looked at, especially what's happening right now in St. Martin. Every day breaks my heart to see what happens to our children, our youth. You know, um, recently it came to my attention there is a, a, a situation in a particular school where little um, children, you know, they're touching each other sexually. But the girls are not aware that the touch is wrong. It's a bad touch. Because once again, who is at home to tell them these things, you know? So it's a lot. It's a lot when we talk about women and balance and authenticity, leading um, with authenticity. We have to start looking at these these ills in our society. That's how we can lead well. And and you know, um, in order to find or in trying in in that quest to find a balance, um, we we tend to lose our authenticity or who we really are, and we become <laughs> fake. We, we have this perceived, you know, idea of who we are. Everything is fine at home. Because you want to excel at the office, everything is fine at home. So you come to work and you go, you go, you go. And your kids are suffering because, as you exactly. said, they're not seeing mommy. Not that, you, yes, you have mommy, daddy, some parents, I mean, some, some, um, some mothers are single parents so they don't have a daddy there so we tend to now be fake and for me as i just say i can't be fake because there's a whole job by itself and i don't have the time and the energy to be fake sorry i can't so in losing ourselves then we can't manage with authenticity so simone i want to bring you in here because i know we had we had you a little bit silent for a while you were listening you were the, you know yeah. you were the in audience to speak on how exactly and i know we're coming on our time so i'll ask our viewers to maybe just give us 10 more minutes of their time so we can wrap up this this um discussion we know we'll have to discuss some more on it but let's 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 we'll have to do a part two definitely to see um yes yeah, simone you can tell us how you know as women we can still try to remain authentic despite all all these challenges that we face in our quest for leadership yeah i think authenticity comes from a very strong sense of identity and knowing who you are as a person yep. taking the whole gender thing aside you know it's it's 
there's a power in being a woman. And I think a part of our authenticity is being able to embrace that and to not run away from it or be ashamed of the fact that we are women and however we show up in the world, right? So you may not be that soft, touchy-feely woman, <laughs> right? That we are stereotypically defined as. You may not be that type, right? You may be that type that is perceived as, and I hate to use these words because they're just not, you know, to me, yeah, the find, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, but you may say strong, driven, ambitious, right? All of these things that are, are said to be yeah. masculine, right. right? So you may be that type of woman. And we've all shared essentially who we are tonight. Because Cassandra's like, if I'm to be authentic, I don't know if I want children, right? And then I'm some people right. may say, Right? And some people may say, oh, what kind of woman are you? Yeah. You know, I am me. Yeah. I am me. I am authentic to that. I mean, is that defining my womanhood? Because mm -hmm. I am not ascribing or aspiring to motherhood. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I had to come to grips with. I was married for uh, almost 12 years, never got pregnant in that time, got divorced, got pregnant unexpectedly, lost that baby. You know, and now here I am at 51 with a five-year-old that I didn't give birth to. Wow. So Look things come that. to us in so many different ways in life that we just have to be real, right? Aisha's like, I don't make breakfast. I'm not a morning person. I'm not either. And so shoot me if I'm a bad mom, but we rarely have breakfast in the morning. <laughs> breakfast is a luxury that we may have on the weekend. <laughs> She's there still sleeping. I am go. struggling to get her to school, you know, be late every morning. You know, I mean, like, we, we just have to be real, I think, with where we are. As Kim said, you know, some of us may not have certain luxuries and we just have to do the best we can with where yeah. we are and being authentic is owning that and understanding that I am not perfect. I'm doing my best. Um, I'm striving to be better in ways that I can. I'm taking time for me. I understand who I am. I understand what I want. And you know, if you aspire to be whatever it is, and it could be, I want to be the best homemaker that I can. I want to be, I know women who have made this decision, strong women, corporate women, who made the decision that I want to be home with my children. Yep. I want to homeschool them. I want to be present for them. I want to be a strong support for them. And that's perfectly that's okay too. That's okay. And I think that is what authenticity is, to just yep. own who you are and be it to the best of your ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cassandra, you want to jump in here? I know we we're, we have just re um, reached our, our mark, but I guess we can go for like about five minutes more. Just I know our audience are accustomed yeah. to one more, but we can go a little bit more. Right. So, yeah. Well, I like what Simone said for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just add to that. So not even um, just saying just to try you know, to thine own self be true, like, mm -hmm. and do it with courage because it's yeah. it's difficult, but also be one of those women that support that with yeah. other women. Yeah. Because I found that to be very difficult as well, especially with the whole child not wanting children, you know, um, and with other women looking at you kind of sideways, like, what is wrong with you? What is that about? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I would have rather be in this position than to take on a child and be resentful of the fact that that's not what I wanted, right? So be also one of those women that encourage authenticity in others. And that's encourage authenticity in women as well as in men. Encourage that authenticity because we need each other, yeah, right? We do. we do absolutely need each other. And we want... We want you to show up um, us as our sisters and, and, and as our brothers in authenticity. Yeah. And, and Ms. Lucas? 
Yes, definitely. Um, you know, it comes right back to a point we made earlier. We have to recognize that we're all different. And in our difference, we must not, or what I should say is we should not look at people as being different and being um, not true to themselves. But if we are to be authentic in our leadership position, as Cassandra said, as Simone said, you know, we have to support other persons in their difference and respect that. We, we should not want everyone to be like us. But at the same time, we must be who we are. And if we do what we are doing with love, because we first have to love what we do also in life, if we, if we want to claim that we are authentic. And while we are doing that, we must support others, whether male or female. And we must recognize their differences and that they have something to offer with their differences. While at the same time, they recognize that I am different. So respect me for my difference, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, one, one, just one important thing. I think, um, I think Cassandra, you mentioned it, is that we must there be there as a support for each other. Can't overemphasize that. You know, um, too, too often in this world, we women are guilty of being very catty to our fellow women. Women. So we have to start taking stock of that, mm -hmm. all right? And um, be and be, you know, a support. If your sister is stumbling, they may have done you something in the past, but hey, mm -hmm. the past. Let the past be the past. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. tell people, I say what's on my mind. If you mash my toe, I'll say you mash my toe. <laughs> but then I'm done with that. And if tomorrow you come, I'm there as a support. And all of us need to at least start doing that. Just, you know, helping a brother or helping a sister up. You know, once we do that, this, this, this world is going to be a better world. But respect each other for who they are. Yes, indeed, ladies. You know, as we wrap up now, we, we understand that the time is ripe. It is it is it is there the fruit is there for us as women to elevate to leadership we understand that we can be we can be sources for change but in order to do that we have to be ourselves and i like the point everyone mentioned it we have to not only have a good support system but we also need to be a good support system to those out there that we want to mentor or those that we are managing or supervising we assess, we evaluate, we know who we help, what what help we give to, to this person, because there might be different assistance that is needed. So we have to make those changes along the way. There will be barriers, we know that. We can't run from that. There will be barriers no matter what. We live in an imperfect world, so we can't expect anything to be perfect. But you know, these changes and us aspiring to leadership is not going to happen automatically. I think there needs to be changes across the board, starting in some countries by the government. The constitution needs to be changed in some countries. Then the organization needs to implement policies that, that, that will help women to elevate. Then we need the institution, the, the education system, academia, they need to ensure that yes. more females enroll into certain courses, they're trained in certain areas. Then we have civil society. Bring it, bring it back home to culture. We need to break that barrier of women have to do this, women need to do that. No, we don't need that. But you know, I want to leave it here on this point. I was telling, I think it's Cassandra earlier, when I started, I read an article earlier. And at the end of the article, the guy, the, the author, he said, you know, we can speak all we want about gender equality, gender, neut gender neutrality. But the question is, is it a fantasy? or is it a reality so viewers we want to wrap up this discussion next week and i'm hoping i don't know if any of these ladies will be available for next week so that we can wrap up to discuss whether or not we will be able as women to achieve something or it is just a fantasy so i want to thank you ladies so much for being with us this evening and i look forward i mean it was a great discussion yes. i really really did enjoy it thank you guys and thanks to the audience for 
given us an extra 10 minutes of your time. Okay. And I really look forward to another discussion. So ladies, you have a good evening and thank you everyone for watching Open Forum. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.